We'd like to thank everyone for taking time out of their schedules to be with us to uh, discuss uh, uh, issues that are associated with uh, one of the top priorities within our office, and that's ensuring that uh, information that we provide throughout the alert and warning community is accessible uh, to all Americans. Okay, our next presenter is uh, Mr. Jason Bolt, CEO and founder of Alertus Technologies. Yeah, thank you. It's a pleasure to be here today to discuss some of the technologies that can be used for not only the general population, but um, realizing that many of those same technologies can be used to make sure that everybody throughout the community, including those with disabilities or who may be deaf and hard of hearing, get notified at the same time. And what's nice is that many of the same technologies that can be used for one population is uh, assistive and, and helpful to everyone across the community. And so uh, if we were to go to the next slide, I think it's important to, for everyone to you know, be familiar with some of the, the code standards that are out there today. Uh, there's a number of uh, specifications, including, of course, Section 508, so in the NFPA 72 code that was enacted in the last couple of years to ensure that everyone get, gets notified. And, and on the screen, you know, a couple of the key points to be aware of is that textual notification devices can serve as the primary or the supplemental means of notification. A lot of folks think of uh, you know, basically visual notification as being, you know, having to be supplemental, but it in fact can be the primary means of notification under the code that's in place today. And it goes a little step further to say that where there is audible notification, that mass notification systems and alerting systems must also have a visual component. And so there's a lot of organizations that are starting to make sure they're, they're in compliance and make sure that there's uh, both audible and visual notification available to folks. And it's important to make sure that those messages are consistent, that you're not going to have different messages uh, across different mediums. So a sign isn't displaying, you know, to go to a certain building while, while, say, a fire alarm is telling people to evacuate and that there be consistency across all these different technologies. And so that's yet another uh, stipulation of the NFPA 72 code. And uh, beyond that, it's, of course, important to make sure that um, all aspects of the system, including distributor, recipient, CMAS, and so forth, is fully integrated with these various in-building technologies and facility-oriented technologies. Alertus has been in business about 10 years. We actually got started out at the University of Maryland locally here uh, 10 years ago after a tornado ripped through the campus and tragically killed two students. And over the course of these last 10 years, a number of different technologies have been developed. Uh, many of them, for example, the alert beacon right here has served not only the general community, making sure that notifications are accessible throughout uh, high occupancy, large area facilities, but also making sure that all individuals within those facilities have access to notification, whether they're deaf or hard of hearing. And this particular device, the alert beacon, is designed to both audibly and visually notify people. It flashes and sounds to capture attention at a wide distance, and then it displays that message to everyone within the vicinity of the area. And it has a number of different inputs and outputs. For example, the demonstration here uh, you know, basically provides a, a sample of some of those different uh, devices that can be connected to larger display signs that will provide notification in a larger area, including those folks who may be deaf and hard of hearing. The text-to-speech devices ensure that messages get through to those who may be blind and that it's, you know, that same message is delivered uh, audibly with text-to-speech technology without the delay that may be caused by someone getting to a microphone and, and putting that message in live voice over those systems. and also provides a higher level of intelligibility. So the goal being to make sure that everyone is accommodated uh, in the notification process, and literally everyone is, is, informed, is informed of what the emergency is and how to respond. And, and that's basically, this, yeah, go ahead, sure. This is about, and, and this is a two-way communication, there, there is two-way communication. There's the ability, for example, people to acknowledge that they received the alert. It also can be utilized in a, with a panic button capability so that people actually need help. They can, they can reach for help, for example, by pressing sometimes a larger button is desired so that folks can press for help, get immediate assistance if they're in danger to that area. Um, and this basically samples the slide right here. Some of those different uh, appliances that can be connected to it, some of them are on display today. You know, as we were speaking a moment ago, sure, go ahead. Is this that right? Is it in various language too or only English? There's certainly the ability to deliver. We, there's a number of organizations throughout the world that use these devices uh, for French, for Spanish. Uh, it's multilingual, certainly. Uh, the text-to-speech technology is another component to ensure that a PA system, a fire alarm system, again, is not going to have different information because one of the challenges is, let's say there is an intruder gunman in a facility, they pull a fire alarm, begin to evacuate the facility when, in fact, there's a mass notification lockdown in place. And so making 
making sure that messages are consistent, that perhaps individuals who can only hear are not going to be misinformed when they can't see a message that says, you know, shelter in place and stay where you are. So very important to consider making sure that not just all these individuals who have different accommodations and needs, but also that it's taken into account that there may be different situations, and we want to make sure there's consistent messages across all those mediums. Go ahead. The panic function, for example, do you maintain your own dispatchers, or does this go to a 911 PSAP, or how is that delivered? Typically the solution is these technologies are deployed in large enterprise organizations, be them campuses, large federal facilities, military bases, medical centers and hospital centers, local governments and schools. And so usually these organizations have deployed this, and they operate it within their protocols, their practices, and with their staff and operations. And so these technologies are designed to enhance their processes, make it more possible for people to get informed more rapidly and ensure that messages are consistent. But it does assume that there's going to be some kind of dispatcher management reception. Sure, that's been the use case historically. There's certainly other applications that could evolve in the future, but that's the design and the practice that's in place today. What's the technology of the panic button? Is it SMS, or is it a what? How does it work? Well, the system can communicate all across different mediums. So, for example, it can communicate over a network connection. It can communicate over a two-way paging. It can communicate over cellular. In fact, we're working with some of the cellular carriers to bring this onto cellular and one day perhaps CMOS and so forth. And so the ability to communicate through just about any technology, it maintains the same protocol, the same encryption and security, and is designed to work across multiple communication pathways. Thank you. Next question. Sure, go ahead. This is Andrew. I'm with the National Association for the Deaf, and I'm just wondering how the messaging would work in coded, for example, if somebody is teletyping it, and then what do they do, send it out to this alert device system, or how does that work? How does it work? Sure. Well, there's two dynamics. You know, one is making sure that everyone can receive the message who's a recipient in need of alert information. On the front end of the system, there's certainly folks who, you know, and to perceive the activation, messages can come through from the National Weather Service, from a threat watcher capability, from a number of automated feeds. But there are certainly times where an individual, for example, Gallaudet University, which uses the alertist solution, there's a need to be able to make sure that those individuals who may be disabled can, in fact, activate the system as well. And certainly there's assistive technologies and various methods that they can utilize to, in fact, originate a message as well. What is the text-to-speech engine used? It's, well, a lot of the text-to-speech technology was actually developed in-house by alertists. We did a, about five years ago, we looked across the market to try to identify technologies or products that were already available that could accomplish this. And unfortunately, there was just nothing that met the threshold of what we felt was critical level of intelligibility and audibility and those tradeoffs. And so as a consequence of that, alertists actually developed in-house this technology to a great extent to be able to deliver this embedded text-to-speech module. It's designed to be at the site level, at the panel level, so you're not going to have any outside fail points beyond the facility. You don't want to have a server, say, halfway across the country when that would pose a fail point. And so it's a very unique product that delivers this embedded text-to-speech technology designed to go right within the system itself and have universal compatibility. And so just to move on to one more slide here, the alertist desktop is another great technology that can serve the entire community, and including those who may be deaf or hard of hearing. It's audible visual, so it displays a message, pops up on a screen in case emails don't get out. Sometimes there's a long delay in emails reaching an inbox, then actually getting read. And so the ability to flash an alert intrusively up on the screen is very important. And then this delivers text-to-speech over the speakers that may be connected to the computer itself, so it's both audible and visual to get the message out to everybody's computer screen. Digital signage override is the next slide. And this is important to ensure that individuals who may be coming or going, not in front of a computer, maybe their mobile device is turned off if they're in a meeting or such, the notification will flash up on those screens as well. And I think there's a number of synergies, for example, with the sign language capabilities perhaps in the future to display that on these screens and flash up that type of capability. So I look forward to working with other companies that are pioneering other technologies in the industry as well. And just to wrap up, this is part of a total solution that's designed with CAP compatibility API, designed to be a very open framework so that other systems can tie in, and ultimately everyone has 
the best technology in place using their existing assets as well as tying it in the future of different technologies that might emerge. And to close out, I just wanted to mention Gallaudet University. Gallaudet is the largest campus in the world serving deaf and hard of hearing individuals, and we've worked with FEMA in the past on some collaborative activities. And basically, you know, I think it's a great use case of, of how folks have been able to not only be able to notify visitors and different individuals who come onto the campus, but also be able to make sure that great technologies are in place to serve uh, individuals who are deaf and hard of hearing and, and have other disabilities. So with that, thank you for the opportunity to share some thoughts today, and thanks. Thanks, Jason. Uh, one of the things that I will also mention is that we've been working with a number of the universities to get a little time uh, at the university consortium meeting so that uh, we can push this message a little bit broader to uh, universities and have them partner with us. Uh, as Jason mentioned, while we don't endorse any product that's being demonstrated today, uh, we did partner with them over at Gallaudet University where the system is fully employed or the employee there uh, and uh, providing alerts, warnings, notifications to the student population on their campus. Uh, and so uh, I would say that when we when we go to the University of Washington, I would solicit the support of all of the, the providers here in the room so that uh, we might provide them with kind of a wealth of information on what's available in the marketplace today and potentially some of the human arrangements that are being entered into to even broaden or expand the capabilities that uh, currently exist. 